wind will stay in the forecast as well. But it is North Dakota, so we're used to that, right, Josh? Absolutely. Thank you, Amber. You might soon have to pay more at the pump if North Dakota lawmakers pass a bill to increase the state's gas tax by three cents a gallon. That three cent increase would lead to $40 million in revenue to go toward infrastructure and road improvements. Currently, a gallon of gas is taxed at 23 cents. Under the new bill, it would be 26 cents. Electric vehicles would also pay double the cost in road use fees at $200 per vehicle instead of $100. The bill passed the House and is now being looked at by the Senate Finance and Taxation Committee. North Dakota's Senate has killed a resolution that would have let residents decide if sports gambling should be allowed in the state. The Senate initially killed the bill Friday. It was reconsidered yesterday, but is still failed by a vote of 23 to 24. Last month, it passed the House by a wide margin. If it would have been approved by both chambers, a measure to allow sports gambling would have appeared on the November 2022 ballot. North Dakota's Indian Affairs Commission Executive Director has announced his resignation. Scott Davis will step down from his cabinet position at the end of April to be the Tribal Outreach Coordinator at Sanford Health. In a phone interview, Davis says he's proud of what he's accomplished in his time and credited Governor Doug Burgum for elevating the state's focus on tribal engagement. He says he hopes to bring his experience in Indian Affairs to his new role working in health care. Davis's resignation is effective April 30th, and according to the governor's office, the search for his replacement has already begun. The Biden administration has scrapped a Trump-era attempt to strip mineral rights from a North Dakota tribal nation. The memo posted Friday by the U.S. Department of Interior withdraws a May 2020 opinion saying the state is the legal owner of submerged lands beneath the Missouri River where it flows through the Fort Berthold Reservation. That memo rolled back an Obama administration ruling favoring the MHA nation, which immediately filed a federal lawsuit opposing the decision. In other news, a man convicted of murder in 1983 of the, during a shootout will not have his sentence reduced. A federal judge denied a sentence reduction by Scott Fowl. He's serving time for murder after a shootout near Medina, which took the lives of two U.S. Marshals. He argued that his breathing problems and conditions of incarceration have created an increased risk for COVID-19 complications. But a judge denied that request. Fowl was sentenced to life in prison on murder charges and an additional 15 years on other offenses. A garage fire in Bismarck left one person injured yesterday morning. According to the fire department, firefighters were called to the fire around 1030 on North 25th Street. There was heavy fire damage to the inside of the home and smoke damage throughout the garage. The homeowner has been treated for burns and release. There were no injuries to first responders. An investigation has already been done and the cause was determined to be accidental in nature. Now, continuing coverage on the Wheatland Village mobile home park fires in Minot that damaged two trailer homes as well as two vehicles. For one of the victims, this is the second time she started over in the last decade. Kelly Hill and her family lost everything they owned after the 2011 flood. On Sunday, Kelly was on her way back from the store when her mom called to tell her that the trailer was in flames. In just eight minutes, everything she and her family owned was destroyed. She says all the family has is the clothes they were wearing. To help out, her godmother set up a GoFundMe page. A link to the fund is on our website, kxnet.com. Now let's take a look at today's top stories. Police say a man opened fire inside a supermarket in Boulder, Colorado, killing 10 people, including 51-year-old Boulder police officer Eric Talley. Officers say the lone suspect was injured when he was taken into custody. His leg was bloodied and he was limping. Police did not say if the suspect has any connection to the store. Tourists let loose in Miami Beach over the weekend, defying a curfew and setting up confrontations with police. The partying could have serious health consequences. Florida has more cases of COVID variants than any other state in the nation. Spring break has increased air travel nationwide. Coming up after Good Day Dakota, CBS This Morning will bring you more on the big stories of the day. We continue our COVID-19 North Dakota watch. Those 16 and older are now able to schedule appointments to get their COVID-19 vaccine through First District Health Unit. 
to make sure the specific vaccine brand is given to given for a 16 and 17 year old people of those ages are asked to call to make an appointment rather than online if you are older than 17 years old you can visit our website to find a link to make an appointment you do not have to be considered to be in a priority group to be eligible first district serves seven counties including botno burke mchenry mclean renville sheridan and ward now to the latest updated numbers from the health department reporting 50 new cases of the coronavirus bringing the total number of active cases in the state to 702. no new deaths were reported so far, 1,461 North Dakotans have died in North Dakota with the virus. 19 people are currently in the hospital with the virus. Almost 102,000 people have now tested positive for the coronavirus across the state. More than 340,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses have now been administered. For the latest information on the coronavirus in our state, including resources, all of the latest case numbers, and prevention, head to kxnet.com. Mandan Public Schools is looking to expand by adding not one, but two schools. Mandan High School is 65 years old and most of the equipment and structure is at the end of its life expectancy. Officials say another issue is space. There's simply not enough restrooms and the lunchroom only fits 360 students at a time. On April 13th, there will be a special election held in Mandan for voters to decide on whether or not to build a new high school and a new elementary in Lakewood area. Carpentry students at Bismarck State College are not only building a home in the community, but laying the foundation for their future careers. They are building a house in Silver Ranch housing development in northeast Bismarck. Construction started back in September and is set to be completed in April. The house will be featured in the Bismarck Mandan Homeowners Association Parade of Homes before being listed with a local realtor. The aim is to prepare students for the profession, which is in high demand right now. Aside from building the house, other projects included making cabinets and furniture. Well, pretty good weather to be a contractor. Let's take a last look, Amber. Yeah, we're looking at uh, pretty very warm temperatures to start the day off with, with our seasonal average temperatures, mostly in the 20s for morning temperatures. These are looking pretty good. 30s, even 41 in Dickinson. Right now, 36 in Garrison and 36 in Rugby. But we do have a little bit of rain on the radar. Not a lot of that's reaching the ground. We've got just a few sprinkles making its way to the ground this morning. There's a lot of dry air that this is falling through, so it's kind of evaporating. And most of us will stay pretty cloudy for today. Highs are back into the 40s and 50s. And again, most of us are going to keep the overcast conditions. Northerly winds will get a little breezy this afternoon, maybe up to 15, up to 15 or so. A few gusts up to 20, 25 can be felt. But over the next week, we do have a small chance for rain on late Thursday night to Friday. A very small chance there on Saturday as well. But uh, temperatures looking pretty seasonable, quite possibly seeing some 60s this weekend. All right, not too bad. Thanks, Amber. Thank you for joining us on Good Day Dakota. CBS This Morning, straight ahead.